Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have another viewer request video following up on a few videos I've made about how to get data out of an Oracle database to migrate it to a better database. Because if you've watched those videos, you know I'm not a huge fan of Oracle databases. They are super old and archaic and hard to use and hard to integrate into a modern tech stack. So if you can get off of an Oracle database, follow those videos and get the heck off of it. But for some people, Oracle databases are the only option, um, and especially at a lot of really large and you know, non-tech focused organizations, they're not focusing on, on databases, right? They just, you know, they get, want them to get the job done, store the data, just let it sit over there in an Oracle database that is super hard to access, but at least we have the data, right? Um, and so what I'm gonna show you today is how you can use Airflow to make interacting with an Oracle database a little bit easier. So I'm gonna show you how you can do data ingestion and data manipulation within an Oracle database using Airflow as the language du jour of interacting with and you know programmatically scheduling extraction, transformation, uh, and loading. And I'm gonna do, you know, transformation and loading, whether they're happening before or after that doesn't really matter. I'm gonna show you how to do transformation before you load it in Oracle, but then also how you can actually transform the data within Oracle if for some reason you wanna do that. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing we're gonna do is create a fresh <coughs> new Airflow environment for us to actually use. So here we are going to CD into our desktop, data guy repos, and then make directory Oracle ETL cd into there oracle tl and then we're going to run astro dev init to just initialize the basic folder structure of a local airflow environment then what we'll do is go and open up that folder we've just created so go to desktop let's scroll down till i find data guy repos here we go and then choosing oracle etl here so here just have a bog standard blank airflow environment using the astro cli and then what I'm going to need to do is go and import a few different requirements in the requirements.txt folder. Um, so here we are implementing the uh, Apache Airflow providers for Oracle. So this is the Oracle provider for interacting with Oracle databases. Also pandas for data manipulation, transformation, doing some of that, uh, you know, basically transformation before we actually upload it into our Oracle database. Requests, this is how we're gonna be handling JSON data, extracting data from an API before we store it into Oracle. Uh, and then we also have CX Oracle, which is a Python package for interacting with Oracle databases from Python. And this is how we're actually gonna orchestrate some of the transformations within the Oracle database using Python here. So once you have your requirements.txt set up, then what we're gonna do is go over into our DAX folder and create a new file, oracledtl.py. Uh, and then what we'll do is start building out our DAG. So first thing we're gonna do is import all those delightful packages and requirements we just installed. So here, we're going to bring in DAG, task DAG. So we're using the Airflow decorators, using the task flow API, and just latest best practices with Airflow. The Oracle hook for using the Oracle defined hook for interacting with uh, Oracle databases. You also need to have the CX uh, piece to actually also interact with Oracle later, but we'll, we'll show you that in a second. Um, and then we also have days ago for just basic date, time, rectification, so we can do backfilling and say, hey, I wanna check against a previous date. Airflow fail exception, we can throw exceptions, throw errors if things don't work properly. Um, and then we also have our pandas, pandas for data frames. This is how we're gonna be creating data frames, manipulating them, and requests, which is how we are going to be pulling from an API and handling that JSON data. So once we have all of those set up, the next step here is going to be defining our DAG, um, and so here we're gonna define our DAG with some just some basic default arguments, owner airflow, three retries. Then we have our default args, days ago, um, just setting some tags. Again, always wanna set tags for best practices within your airflow DAGs. Um, and so now that we have our DAG definition body set up, it's time to actually start writing our DAG. And since I said this is gonna be a ETL workflow, the first thing we need to do is actually just extract some data. Um, so for this, all I'm using is just a basically JSON placeholder, that type code, that post. This is just dummy data you can pull from this website. Here, we're just making a check. So, hey, raise for status, check that this is available. Then going to fire request, um, get that, whatever response I get in terms of, you know, this JSON post, this raw data, and then turn that JSON data into a pandas data frame. 
Then, once I've turned that into a pandas data frame, I'm then going to define a temporary file path so I can store this data on my local machine and then pass it to the, ne pass it to the next task. For larger data sets, you might want to consider using object storage. Um, but for this example, just use a simple CSV to pass it between tasks. Um, and then saving it to that file path and then returning the file path as a pointer for the next task to pick up um, and use the data for its transformation. So once you've got the data extracted, then it is time to transform it. So here in our transform task, what we're going to do is pick our data back up from that file path, reading that CSV back in. Then here I'm just doing some basic capitalization on some titles from these posts, uh, calculating the length of each post body. Um, so just some basic transformations that would be hard to do within Oracle, but are easy to do with a little Python landing zone outside of Oracle. Then what I'm doing is saving that transform data to a new enhanced transform path, uh, and then passing that transform path back to my next task, which is then going to finally just validate the data for and check for any kind of missing values or any things that could cause errors in my downstream pipelines. So here, just reading that CSV again, not changing anything this time. All I'm doing is just checking, hey, has there been any you know corrupted or missing data that is going to cause a failure downstream. And so I want to get that data out of here now if it is going to cause an issue. So now our data is all prepped and ready for the start of the show, which is the actual upload into an Oracle database. And here, what you're going to do is you are going to basically define this entire task within Python. <clears throat> so even though Oracle technically has a connector for Airflow, it doesn't really work. So what you're going to need to do is load in and, and uh, see a <coughs> load a Python task and then use an Oracle hook with an Oracle connection ID. Um, and this is just me one long string that is all of your connection details. So your host name, your username, password, all the information to connect to your environment. And then what we're going to do is initialize a hook connection and also create a cursor. Then using that cursor, what we're going to do is, so in this case, just drop a dummy table, um, drop the table that, and so there's no existing data in this table that we're going to upload our data into. So in this case, you know, data that we, I don't, I want to be able to overwrite the previous day's data, right? If I'm doing this kind of ingestion. Um, so not additive. And then what I'm doing here is creating a new table with different uh, column names for my different columns. So number, number primary key, this is the, because this is going to be my primary identifier. So then Oracle, you have to define it as a primary key, then varcar, clob, and number. Um, so this is text, this is number, um, and so here what we're going to do is just create our table and then iterating through our data frame, which we're pulling through up here using the read CSV pandas tool, we're then going to read that data in and insert into our table each row of that pandas data frame. Then we're going to commit that execution, execute the select count statement to actually just check, hey, did this data upload correctly and make sure we don't get a zero value here. And then once we've verified that we haven't gotten a zero value, the data has been successfully updated, then what we'll do is close that connection and return the record count. So we have a tracking point within our Airflow DAG of, hey, how much data was uploaded. And then also we can catch those silent failures or maybe zero data got uploaded and I can come in here and check, hey, actually no data got uploaded here or exactly how much data was uploaded. So now that our data is in our Oracle database, I then also want to show you how you can do some data quality checks before I show you also how to do some you know, kind of movement of data within your Oracle database. So here, what we're doing is a data quality check. So here, making sure that our count uh, is of the expected amount quality. Um, so your expected amount of data versus your actual amount of data. So this is just you know, one example of data quality checks you could do, a very simple one, just to make sure, hey, I am getting the expected amount of data from my ingestion point rather than getting less data over time or maybe getting zero data, which is a common problem in these kind of pipelines. Then once we have you know, created our data quality check, our next step is going to be doing a create and copy table. So here, what I want to do is show you. So here, let's say I'm moving data between two different tables. Um, and in this case, I need to do that because I'm deleting the previous contents of this data every time I create a new table. Um, every time I upload a new set of data. And so here what we're doing is creating a copy of this table um, to move into a more permanent data storage location. Um, in this case, I'm just making very simple, you know, saying, hey, copy the uh, dummy table copy. Um, in this case, I'm also purging it as well. But if you wanted this to be a more long lived location, you wouldn't need to have this execute, this create table um, or drop table. This would be more of a copy statement. But again, I wanted to show you a lot of different options here. 
Um, and then what we'll do after we've created this empty table is and then moved our data into it. Um, so creating table as select all from dummy table. So this is how we're copying everything over by just selecting all and then creating a new table from that contents. And then in our new table, what we'll do is create another cursor connection in the exact same way and just drop a column. Um, and so this is how you would then start to do in database transformations. So if you want to use your Oracle database for the actual transformation engine, I probably wouldn't, but you can. This is how you would do it. And again, just through more iterations of that cursor. Um, and that's really you know the meat and potatoes of this tag. Then we're also just going to add a notified success, notify failure uh, notifications so we can set those as alerts um, if something succeeds or fails. And then down here, we're just going to have very simple DAG orchestration of, hey, just one DAG's output gets passed to another, so the file location gets passed back and forth, um, and then the record count. But then after that, we don't really need it because we're just directly referencing that table. Um, and that is everything I had for you. Just want to show you how to create a start to finish ETL workflow with an Oracle database. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a new idea for a video, let me know in the comments. I'd love to make it. Uh, but above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.